You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. What is good, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Once again, I'm Rick, joined by Big Show. What's up, Show? What's happening? Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a brand new year, ain't it? You know what that means, right? For the next six months, for the next six months, I will continue to put 22 on everything. There you go. I'm just glad the computer automatically changes it for me. There you go. I need one of those in my life. So, uh, you know, other than, you know, the odometer changing on the years, uh, how's everything been this past couple of weeks? So far, so good. The holidays were kind, I see. Somebody's looking yeah. real professional up in here. I know, right? Now, now I can actually maybe get paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to get them thousand subscribers to monetize. So uh, that's my cue to tell everybody, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit like, subscribe, share, all that. And uh, so what you're saying is I need to create 999 different accounts and just subscribe to the place. That could work. That's a lot of work, though. But, uh, hey, if you're willing to put in that kind of work, I will share those profits with you regardless. <laughs> there you go. On a serious tip, though, we are making a few minor changes that you and I have discussed before. And this will be the first time that we're going to be discussing it with uh, the listening crowd. Uh, and, and I want to do it for 2022. And I've dabbled in it here and there throughout last year. But uh, we are definitely going to have more broken down segments on YouTube because we know that uh, for whatever reason, most YouTubers have a really short attention span. So instead of bombarding them with 40 minutes of nonstop us, we'll give it to them in small bites, 10 minutes or less. And um, also we want to bring on uh, more interviews for the show. So over the coming weeks, you're going to see, you know, local talent, local celebs, uh, people that are doing things in the communities. And uh, we're going to talk to them. And if we're lucky here and there, we might get some uh, national folks that want to share some time with us. And we want to bring all that to you guys in 2023. It's about growth. And uh, this is our time. Yes, sir. Now, I do have one more thing regarding that. I know there's a lot of people out there that listen that may want to talk about something to us. Uh, if you've got a topic that you want us to tackle, leave a comment right here on the show, or you can email me at uh, rjkproductions at yahoo.com. And I will take all of those. Actually, cut. Let me Let me redo that. Email me, email me at Richard James Kearney at yahoo.com. And I will go ahead and do my best to uh, get in touch with you, find out uh, what the topic is. If you want to come on and present your topic yourself, I have no problem with guests on here. We'll take anybody. We reserve the right to shut you down if it gets out of hand. Does that mean and Skip we will. Bayless? Skip Bayless can't be on our show. <laughs> oh, I would love to have Skip on the show. <laughs> you would do what Shannon didn't do. You stand oh, your boy. ground, young man. <laughs> we will get to especially, that in a second. Especially if I'm across the table from him. Hey, but real quick, spell your name out so those that are want to email you can actually make sure they get it to the right person. That's right. I did just say Richard James Kearney. It's R I C H A R D J A M E S K E A. R-N-E-Y at yahoo.com. And for those of you who don't pay attention to me, I will have it printed at the bottom of the screen too. Hey, even better. <laughs> I forgot you're good at that. <laughs> every now and then. Every now and then. Um, we, 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 we got to grow. We got to get better. 
I need to add some more hot toys to my background. There you go. And besides my wife, uh, she says I'm addicted. And if that's the case, uh, I need another hit. (laughs) So real quick show. Um, You brought up something over this nice, wonderful holiday season that we want to get to today. Mm -hmm. And it's been eating at me, you know, ever since the third or fourth DC Universe movie. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will agree with what we have to say. Your question was, why can't the DC Cinematic Universe get it right? Tell me what it is that uh, you think they're not getting right. And what do you think can be done to maybe right the ship? To stick to a plan and and follow it from point A to point B like Marvel. That's the big thing. Mm. Um, What I was referring to. Let me break that part down because I I like that. To stick to a plan for all us diehard Star Wars fans. And if you can't tell, I am a Star Wars fan. Much as I like Star Wars, the sequel trilogy kind of let me down because they didn't stick to a plan. And that's what happens when you don't. Um, What would you say broke the plan for them? Well, they broke the plan multiple times. That's you know? true. And then when you think that, okay, they're going to get back on track and then... Uh, so... I'm not like a huge DC fan, but DC is what I think, you know, first introduced my generation to the comic book, Superman, Batman, you know, all that stuff. Um, Especially Batman. And you think about it, those are some of the most famous superheroes around, yet they can't get it right. I mean, Christopher Nolan's Batman films were fine. Those were absolute masterpieces. Now, which I'll, one I'll is even, Christopher Nolan? He's the one which that did Batman the three. Movies? He's the one that did the three that had uh, Bane, the Joker, and um, who was in the first Batman movie? So the, so the Dark Knight. Yeah, the, the Dark Knight The Dark Knight series. Okay. Yes. See, and then that's the thing, because you have, like, what I really enjoyed. Uh, I'm, I'm just rambling, but here. WB, the channel WB, got their mm-hmm. DC Universe right. Arrowverse, Flash, Supergirl, all that stuff. Supergirl was kind of cheesy, but for the most part, they got that universe right. Yeah. I don't, what bothers me is how the movie side, the cinematic side, can't do the same thing. And it goes from having, you know, we'll just start with Superman, Man of Steel, you know, and then. Uh, wasn't it uh, Superman versus Batman, Dawn of Justice or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you had Justice League, which the original Justice League was meh, but Zack Snyder's version was, I thought, pretty dang good for the most part. I agree. Shameless self-promotion. There's a link up above my head so you can watch my take on the uh, Justice League, the Zack Snyder version (laughs) versus the old one. And then... You know, you get the word that uh, Henry Cavill is no longer going to be Superman. So now you're like, okay, now you basically have to start over. You had the Batman being um, Ben Affleck, Mm -hmm. who wasn't great, but he wasn't bad, so to speak. And then you come out with the one with the old vampire Harry Potter guy. What's his name? Twilight Boy. Uh, yeah yeah um, you know and that's like a complete that that's like completely separate to anything that you've seen with batman before now that movie in itself by itself is good yeah I it, was it was a damn good movie good. And but it's I, confusing I more, because people that are going to go see it were just like well wasn't ben affleck batman is that a younger version of ben affleck well see that's the different if you're a true superhero fan you understand where these took you know they're different universes multiverses you know if you watch any of the flash you realize that there are multiple universes and there's a flash in each one so to speak you know type of thing 
and and Marvel is actually have introduced that very well and will probably build off that, I would assume. So yeah. but what you know, and then Shazam came out and I thought Shazam, you know, was a pretty decent movie, you know, in and of itself was pretty good. I thought it was well played. But at the time, Henry Cavill was not Superman. So spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't seen it. At the very end, there's a cut scene where the little dude wanted Shazam to come have lunch with him at school. And Shazam brought his friend Superman, but they only show him from the neck down. So you don't, they never really show Henry Cavill because at that time he was not allowed to play Superman. So then Henry Cavill went and did The Witcher, right? So he was doing that for a few seasons. Yeah. And then the big news came out. Henry Cavill re-signed as Superman. And then Black Adam dropped. And I thought Black Adam was pretty doggone good. I, I enjoyed it. And then at the end, spoiler alert, <laughs> there's a cutscene. And there's where, you know, the, the chick from Suicide Squad, the, the Amanda head Waller. Chick, yeah. She says, you know, he's rock basically tells her you know there's not a there's not nobody on this earth that can stop me and she said well i have to go outside of this planet to stop you if needed and then all of a sudden superman walks out the clouds and says we need to talk and that's kind of how it ended and i'm like yes the day after i seen that movie henry cavill gets fired as superman again adam drop uh, black adam drops or rock drops everything that have to do with black adam so everything that they just did to build up this whole DC universe and Shazam 2's coming out, you know, it, and it just like falls flat and they're going to have to start over again. It's just so disappointing. Like Marvel did not have to do that. Once they started with Iron Man, they just steadily kept building the snowball. I don't know why yeah. DC can't do it. Now, just to catch everybody up, not only is Henry Cavill out, and they're scrapping all their plans. Uh, Gal Gadot may be out if they don't get a good script this year for the next Wonder Woman movie. Jason Momoa is already out, although there's an Aquaman 2 movie that's scheduled to come out this summer. Don't ask me how many people really want to go see it, now knowing that there's nothing else going forward. The Flash movie was supposed to like introduce us, like you said, to the multiverse, but they are recutting scenes because they don't want it to lead to anything because there isn't going to be any multiverse with this Flash movie. And this Flash person that is playing him is already in trouble with the law and he's done stupid things while shooting the movie. So he's no longer going to be the Flash anyway after it's all said and done. That was so, Ezra Miller, right? Yes. yes. And he's the, one, he's the one that played the Flash in the movie Justice League. Yes, absolutely. Which they should have casted the kid that played him in the WB series. Exactly. And fun fact, this is how long it's been taken to get this Flash movie off the ground and into theaters. They were talking about doing it before the first season of The Flash on the WB. And we know that's been on eight years. Yeah, the last season's starting here in a couple weeks. Fun fact... The Rock has been trying to do Black mm -hmm. Adam for six and a half years. So there's your problems right there with DC. If a movie doesn't make enough money in their eyes, they want to scrap everything. If it takes too long to do something, they can't make up their minds collectively, they want to scrap everything. It's just a whole table of old men in suits that can't agree on something when the formula for Marvel was simple. Kevin Feige had the last word, period. If he didn't like it, it wasn't happening. And he kept everything cohesive. Everything happened for a reason. And that's what led us into the next movie and the next movie. And, you know, his crowning jewel back mm. in the day was uh, Infinity War and Endgame. You actually felt for these people because you've had them all in at least one other solo movie. At they didn't least. just get thrown in. Yeah. I mean, we saw Robert Downey Jr. three times before the first Avengers movie. Right. And how and we were super attached. And then the way that they introduced uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, into mm -hmm. Civil War, you immediately become attached because of his relationship with Tony Stark. 
Right. And then, you know, he had his couple movies plus in the in the uh in game and um that, that's right. You know, uh, uh, Infinity yeah, so, War, yeah. in game. Infinity and... War, yeah. Yeah, I and, just and if I we didn't have DC those to... if we didn't have those, by the way, that scene where he goes to dust while he's holding on to Tony, it wouldn't have meant so much. Oh no. If we didn't have those when it comes to in game, when Tony snapped his fingers, it wouldn't have meant so much. I tell agree. me, tell um, me you didn't get the feels when Tony snapped his fingers and you knew it was over for him. Oh yeah. Well, it was it was touching and it was and they were all well done. Um they stayed on course. You know, it's just like to me with whoever's running DC, pick a direction and go. You exactly. Know, Even the lighthearted comedies that you didn't think had anything to do with anything factored into it. Who would have thought that Ant-Man being trapped in the quantum realm Helps them figure out how to time travel. Exactly. There it is. And then what they're about to drop with uh, Quantum Mania. Exactly. You know, it's going to be a whole new, and then you have the Secret Wars. Yeah, because if you I thought mean, Kang, yeah. if you thought uh, Thanos was bad, Kang is going to, yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. Kang, Kang makes Thanos look like a nun. Kang has actually killed Thanos several times in the yes. multiverse. So, hmm. Yeah. It, it, we could go and didn't on need the affinity stones to do it that is true very <laughs> true all right excuse us while we geek out here um hey it's all about the superheroes and the sports uh, i want to talk about sports real quick um big show i know you're chiefs fan i know you're chiefs fan i see all that red back there i appreciate that um I'm kind of hurting right now, bro. My quarterback. My quarterback is gone. You know, for most, almost all of a decade, my quarterback has been Derek Carr. Now, say what you will about him, right, wrong, good, or bad. And I'll get to that in a second. I believe the Raiders did him dirty. Um, The man gave everything he had for the team. And I'm tired of seeing people talk about, well, he's had nine years and we haven't gotten a playoff win. Does he play defense now? Did I miss something? Did he by himself blow five double digit leads this season? I, I guess if he did, then yeah, you can say it's Derek's fault. I'm not saying that no. he's not to blame. He's He's got to share some of the blame too, because he's made some mistakes, but He's not the sole reason that we are. Where oh we no, are. they're they're an overall dumpster fire this year. I mean, let's just let's just call it what it is. Um, but no, he he's not that he doesn't play defense that causes them to lose. How many did you say they lost five games? Right, Double it's five score? now because the San Francisco game they were up by ten. Wow, but you know he is a uh, partial to blame for putting his defense in bad situations. By throwing yeah. missed time turnovers, um. So, I you know I can feel your pain because there were many years where, being a Chiefs fan, we were crushed. We did just enough, looked just good enough to maybe get in the playoffs, get in the playoffs, and get our ass whooped. So, I definitely understand your heartache. But I'm going to tell you that this is the beginning of a new era for the Raiders, and you should be excited. I will be as long as they don't do one thing. Do not get Tom Brady. They're not going to get Tom Brady. I already told you where Tom Brady's going to go next year. He's going to Miami. Oh, I thought you were going to say hell, but you know. No, nah, he's going um, to Miami. Just as hot, but yeah. I I think like you like something so good, but it's so bad for you. That's kind of what Derek Carr was. I mean, you know, he's this, he, he's that, he's that, you know. That's the title that, of this segment. I'm in an abusive relationship with Derek Carr. <laughs> yeah, you know, hit me again, Ike. That's what Tina Turner kept saying. Hit me again, Ike. She kept coming back. It's just so shiny, so good. But now it, you you have been forced to separate. Yeah. I believe this is going to be a good thing in the long run. 
for both the Raiders organization and Derek Carr. Yeah, I agree my, too. My prediction for Derek Carr next year, he will either be playing for the Colts, but most likely I think he'll play for Red the Skins. Tennessee Titans. Whoa. I, I said Redskins. Excuse me. I meant Commanders. That's gonna I take think some he's time. gonna play for the Tennessee Titans. Got Mike or you know, Vrabel as a really good head coach. I think that'll be the perfect landing spot for him. And you know what all those teams have in common? They have a defense. There you go. There you go. They do have a defense. But I'm gonna be honest, Raiders have a defense as well. They just can't. They they they're for whatever reason they just they have bad they're they're from top to bottom they're just attitude reflects leadership leadership is bad in that in that organization yeah and take it from somebody that had you know when Todd Haley was here bad leadership oh that was a dumpster fire you know um it's just. I think you'll be okay. I think this Stidham guy is is a stopgap till you find somebody mm -hmm. else. But Stidham's no joke. I mean, he played in the Patriot system. He knows Josh McDaniel, so it it might be a puzzle piece that works. Might yeah, and, and believe me, you know, if you would have told me at the beginning of the season, Carr's not going to be here at the end of the season, I would understand it. Maybe I still wouldn't like it. But it was how it went down that kind of gets under my skin. Oh, no, I I agree. I think he was done crappy, you know, just basically saying, hey, we're just going to bench you for the." But, you know, that's another dirty reason. You you did hear why they did it, right? Uh, that's got to do with the cap. Yeah, if, if, if he played if he, those if last he played two and games, got hurt, they owed him like $30 40, million. $40 dollars. million. 40 million. I heard it was 33 it's it's thirty but, something, but it, yeah, it's you still might it's say. still a lot of flipping money. Mm -hmm. That if he played those last two games, they got to cut him a thirty three, thirty five, thirty plus million dollar check. <laughs> yeah, and I understand that we are a quote unquote cash poor team. We are not in that Jerry Jones stratosphere. I, I get that, but what well, doesn't really matter how rich you are. In the NFL, because everybody has a cap. I mean, Denver Broncos ownership is, is has more money than Jerry Jones. That is true. I forgot about Mr. Walton there. Uh, but but the thing <laughs> is, they know that we need to put some money into this defense. They know that. Y'all have a my whole defense. thing is y'all really rest do. restructure the man's contract, make it player, make it team friendly, and then well, he if has he to want to do that. It, and that's true. If he didn't want to do that. The Raiders and Derek Carr have agreed to part ways. Isn't and the that cool how the thing NFL about it, For the most part, but he has a no trade clause too. So he gets they can't just trade with anybody. He gets to pretty much choose where he wants to go. That's so true. he still has a lot of power in in the relationship. But yeah, it, it was pretty crappy. Now I just want to touch on one more thing before we move on to the rest of the NFL. Um, David Carr, yes, Derek's brother. Um mentioned that he's going to go on some podcast and he's going to be uh, dealing the dirt on everything that he's heard about the Raiders organization. Now, I don't know how much of it is him being butthurt because his brother got did dirty. I'd probably do the same thing for my brother. But as somebody who's been in the NFL and been part of a dysfunctional team, I'm going to be inclined going into it to take most of what he has to say at face value. But until I hear it from DC himself, Derek, not David, um, you'll never know 100% of the story. But I can tell you this, just from things I've seen watching every Sunday, things that I've he heard about, you know, the Raiders organization, and I hate to use the word dysfunctional on my own organization, but some of the things they've done over the years are true head scratchers. I mean, even before Derek took his first snap, remember the quarterback they had 10 years ago, Jamarcus Russell? Uh -huh. Number one overall bust. That was that was the trashiest trash I, I've ever seen. And I'm a Raider fan, and I'll tell you that that wasn't working out. Where he was a Popeye's biscuit away from being an offensive lineman? Pretty much. 
<laughs> Pretty much. So, you know, I've heard about some things. I've seen some things. And what is that rule they say? If one person says that it might be rumor or speculation, a couple people say it, there may be some truth to it. More than that, then you know where there's smoke, there's fire. True. But, I mean, so is the blame ownership? Starts at the top. Did Mark Davis learn how to run his team into the ground like his dad did? I mean. And, and that's where I take it into separate things. I think Mark is running it into the ground a different way. With Al, Al is just stuck on the old ways. What worked in the AFL in the 60s and 70s could not work in the 90s and the 2000s. That's where a fault is with Al. Al is a great owner for the golden era. Mark, he takes too many risks, too many shots. Um, I hate to say this about Vegas, but he gambled a lot. He put $100 million into uh, John Gruden. Didn't work. He put an undisclosed amount, but we know it's a high amount, into Josh McDaniels. He's put so much into that coach that – and this is where the cash poor thing comes in because there's no cap, but he doesn't have – that kind of money. If he fires him today, he's on the hook for X amount of money, but he still has to pay another coach. So now you're talking about having two coaches on your payroll. So I think that's where a lot of this may come into play. Who who does he trust more, the coach or the player? I myself, and this is just me, would have sided more with Derek because I can see from the outside in what we need. Hey, we need some defense. Get me a defensive-minded coach. We're okay on offense. We just went no. to the playoffs. No, 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 no. You want an offensive coach that can delegate his defensive roles to a defensive coordinator that's worth a damn. Name me a defensive coach that does really well every year, year and out, besides Mike Tomlin. Mike Vrabel. Mm, I mean, we're he's still the jury's still out. He's okay, I'll give you that. Years. The jury's still out. Yeah, he's had two uh, good years. Name me another one. When's the Harbaugh? last defensive coach win a Super Bowl? Harbaugh? He's a special teams coach. Was he special teams? I thought he was DC. Special teams coach. Okay, never mind. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Then I really can't. Right. This is an offensive league, so you need an offensive minded coach that can delegate, and you need a good defensive coordinator. Like, look at Robert Salas, who's phenomenal when he was with San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He's not a great head coach because he focuses more on defense. He focuses more on stopping the other team from scoring versus making sure you have more points than the opposition. True. And that's the NFL that we're in, in my humble opinion, right now. I agree with you on that. Um I would have did everything I could to sign to sign Sean Payton. Man, you can't now, though. No, not now. And he was never in the cards because you he still was under contract in New Orleans. That is also true. I mean, I'd have stayed with Rich Bisaccia one more year. I probably would have too. The way that he had everything rallied around, and, uh, and I guess team. they played really well. That's the reason why I said, hey, you know, you're okay on offense. Realistically, you've added Devontae Adams to an already potentially potent offense. You should not be blowing double-digit leads. No, but I mean, but it's, you know, you there really isn't one explanation for why they suck this year. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, there's so many reasons. But I, I do think in the long run, you guys, you're, you'll be ha in a few years. You'll be like, man, I remember how heartbroken I was when Derek Carr got cut or whatever. Look at us now. We're about to lose in a wild card, but it'd be awesome. You'll be there. I like the way you slid that in there about to lose in the <laughs> wild card. So I guess uh, I'm wondering who we're playing on wild card weekend. Is that a team won't over be, there in Missouri? No, it won't be cheese because we'll have the, the bye. Well, okay. I mean, you know, the buy is owned currently this year by a team in Buffalo, New York. 
No, it's not. They're the number one seed. No, they're not. Why not? We're 13 and three. They're 12 and three. Mm, mm, mm. That, ooh. That's why what happened last night on Monday Night Football was so big before the injury to Mr. Hamlin. Yeah. Uh, but that's why that game was so big because um, if the Bengals would have won, it would have dropped Bills down to 12 and four. They yeah. The Bengals would have came up to 12 and four. So that would have dropped the Bills down to the third seed. Bengals would have been the second seed and the Chiefs would right. be the number one seed. And right now, as it is, we're number one, Bills are number two, Bengals are number three. I see what and you're saying. And from everything that I've researched and read and heard, they are not going to play this game between the Bills and the Bengals. How it's could not, you? It's not going to be resumed anytime. Like they're not going to play it. Yeah, there's there's no there's no way that fits in the schedule for that. So most likely there's no double headers in football. No, most likely they'll It'll be a tie for both teams. They'll, they'll just mark it as a tie. And in that case, then by proxy, Chiefs will have the number one seed. Look at you dogs go. I mean, I, I don't want to win it that way, you know. Um, but, I mean, it's just mathematically that's what it is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you'd rather earn it. Either way, um, well, I'm not saying we didn't earn it. We are 13 and three. Well, that that is true. That is true. But, but to win it by this devastating thing that happened last night on Monday Night Football, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not bragging. R real quick about that, um, how much of an ass is Skip Bayless and others who made tweets about, "Hey, let's get on with the game." Skip's and I'm tweet paraphrasing. Didn't say, yeah, Skip's tweet didn't say that. It didn't, but uh, there are others that we saw online that did. I mean, Skip is in a little hot water because Skip's of in hot water you know, because of who he is, and he doesn't necessarily think before he types or talks or whatever. But yeah, I think I think. Did you watch? Were you watching it live as it happened, or did you just see it afterwards? I saw it afterwards because for whatever reason, well, I'll say the reason. I'm in a fantasy league. I'm in the semifinals, and I'm currently down, and Josh Allen is my quarterback, which, by the way, now means that I am out because he was he was the only player I had left. Uh, so since this game will not be played, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And – I didn't want to watch because I was like, oh, my God, he'll probably throw a pick six to start the game. I can't do it. I'll just catch up with it at halftime. And before I knew it, every time I looked, I'm like, why is it still six minutes to go in the first quarter? This was an hour ago. First, I thought, you know, everything was messed up. I looked online and found out delay. OK, weather delay in Buffalo. I mean, in, in Cincinnati. But as I started reading more and more, I found out what was going on. I'm like, man. For this kind of a delay, something real bad had to happen. And that's when I, you know, delved deeper into it and found out what I found out. Yeah, so watching it live, because, you know, I, I was really excited. I wanted to watch this game just from a fan perspective because of the number one seeding in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let's go Cincinnati. I was a, I was a Bengal fan last night. And... uh you know, when it happened, you know, they cut to commercial like they normally do. And you're yeah. thinking, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it'll be over. But it became pretty apparent pretty fast that it's this was something different. Yeah. Um, it, it was pretty bad. I think that's why you got the people saying, just come on, get them off the field. You know, let's play, blah, blah, blah. Because nobody really necessarily understood the gravity of the situation. Except for those people, you know. That were there. I, I do want to mention something because you mentioned the people that were there. Usually when it's somebody on the opposing team, you know, a few players from the opposing team will come check on you, see if you're all right. Uh, 
you know, fist bump, all that, you know, good sportsman type stuff. I want to give a shout out to Joe Burrow because I heard about this uh, early this morning. He gathered the rest of the captains of the Bengals team while they were all, all the teams were in their locker rooms and they went over to the Bills locker room to check the situation, to see how everybody was doing and make sure everything was all right. Props to him for that. You know, at, at that point it was like, you know, I don't care if we're on the opposing team. I want to see how this man's doing. I want to see how everybody's doing. Yeah. That they entire had... since Cincinnati organization did that. I mean, it was, it was pretty, you did, like I said, you, you weren't watching live, but like you could see on the players' faces, you know, uh, they showed, um, Diggs crying, Josh Allen crying, Tredavious White crying. A lot of the, I mean, there wasn't a dry eye on the Buffalo sideline. Yeah. Um, but you know, but it wasn't for long that both teams were pretty much intermingled. And then, yeah, they all met. A lot of them went to the hospital together as well. Yeah. Um, and it just goes to show you, you know, there are things that are so much more important than a game. Yeah, most definitely. And, Prayers and, up to Mr. Hamlin. Yeah, definitely. And from what I've heard lately, he's still not out of the woods yet. Still in critical condition. So there's a ways to go. You know, the 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 scary thing is how like there there was a, a doctor that came on TV talking about what probably happened to Mr. Hamlin. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not a doctor, so any doctors out there can type in what this is called. But basically, the way your heart beats, it it has an uptick and a downtick, and then a me a little medium tick before it resets its cycle and pumps again. There is a mini, milli, millisecond window of that last little tick before it recycles. That if you get hit in the chest, what happened to Mr. Hamlin could happen. And that's what they're saying has happened. I mean, his he went into cardiac arrest on the field. He he had no heartbeat. They did defibrillator and CPR on the field. Yeah. Never had in my years of watching football. I mean, I don't know about you if you've seen anything like that. No, I've never. Yeah, I mean, you're a, usually you're a when little we see older it, than me, but not much. When we see stuff like that, it's usually a leg injury. Yeah, or head. Yeah. You know, neck, you know, like um, Tua, you know, the brain injuries. Here's yeah. another weird fact, too. The four most dangerous or, or, or worst case scenario injuries happen on the Cincinnati Bengals field. Antonio Brown, Ryan Shazier. Tua Tongalova and this kid last night, Mr. Hamlin. That's kind of creepy. That is very creepy. I, I seen that today as well. I was like, wow. But yeah, the, the scary thing for me is the more that I hear that this young man is still intubated and sedated, mm -hmm. you know, the longer that that process goes, the outlook isn't necessarily great. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously none of us are in control. God's in control of the situation, but just the longer that he's in that state, the scarier for me, just as an outsider that's not connected to the player at all, to the team, just as a human being with compassion. Um, that's the scariest part for me. Indeed. Um, just like you mentioned earlier, prayers go out to him and his family, and we are wishing, hoping, and praying for a speedy recovery for that young man. Um you don't even want to think about anything going south in this particular case. And you don't even want to think about, oh, will he play again? You know, the hell with playing again. Just make sure that that man's able yeah. to walk, talk, and enjoy life. Walk out of the hospital. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, a positive side of humanity. I don't know if you've seen this, but this young man had a GoFundMe page for a toy drive and was only asking for $2,500. As of an hour or so ago, it's at $4.5 million. Mm. Hey, that goes to show you, even in the darkest, tragic situations, 
something good can come out of it. Yeah, just all and of the it, it would be really is, nice for him to actually to see that. Yes. Yes, that would be a very nice for him to wake up to that and see how his his charity it was blessed and things. I just thought that was really really neat of uh the people across the world that you know, you see something like that as a human you want to what can I do, you know, and then you see this and oh, I, I can donate 20 bucks or whatever. And, and there are still cool. some good people left in the world. And that and that that's growing. That that amount is growing. Yeah. Okay. Continuing on with the NFL. Um, this is the part that I've grown to hate because we're talking about the AFC West. Because, you know, I haven't gotten too many wins this year. I mean, at least I'm not a Denver fan. But that's another thing. Um, game predictions. Here comes the most brutal game of the season. For all intent and purpose, we got somebody who's just a little bit above rookie status at quarterback. And we are hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, if what you say holds true and they they have the number one seed, what do you think the likelihood is that they play their starters the whole game? It's it's really going to depend on what the NFL says about this Bengals Bills game. However, they're going to resolve it. Obviously, they can't give them both a win and they can't give them both a loss. So that's why I, my personal opinion, I think they're going to end up tying it. If they tie it, I don't think I, I think we would have to win to ensure because that would put us at uh, what thirteen and four if we lose. Yeah, well, I don't think you're going to lose, but that's I'll get to that in a and, second. And if the Bills were to beat the Patriots, that would put them at 13-3-1, so they would have the number one seed again. So I think that we're going to play. The fact that it's a Saturday, it's the first game, it's Saturday afternoon at 3.30, I think. So they did move time. it. Yeah, it's the first game on Saturday. Okay. Um. You know, I think we're going to, you know, the ball is in our court. You know, if we're strictly talking football and playoffs, the ball's in our court to to snatch that number one seed and get that first run by. So I think you'll see us. You'll see the you'll see the actual team until we know the game's locked in. But knowing how the Raiders games are, that might be three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Could be. Although. Out of all the wins that you had. We were the closest to beating you if it wasn't for coaches. No, no. It was no. only it you was only one point. It was one point loss. Yeah. It, true. I mean that's what I mean like when I say closest. Wise. Yeah. Closest in terms of points. Yeah, but you, yeah, hopefully y'all learn how to cover Travis Kelsey because I think he had four touchdowns that game. Yes, he did. You, there's no think. He did. <laughs> uh only and, 25 yards receiving, but he had four coaches or four touchdowns. And it's off of seven catches. Yeah. If you if you would have told me, oh, Kelsey's only going to be held to seven catches. Oh, that's a win. No, it's not. Seven catches for only 25 yards. <laughs> but four touchdowns. So basically, Kels didn't even do anything until they got in the red zone. Didn't need to. Y'all forgot he didn't for you forgot how to cover him. We forgot hopefully he was out have there. that same hopefully you have that same defensive scheme. Well, we have that same defensive coordinator, so I'm pretty sure we'll be. Uh, we'll be up. We'll be up by two touchdowns in the first half, only to watch that lead evaporate. <clears throat> and you would think maybe. Well, I mean, this will actually depend on. To me, it'll depend on how. What's the mental state of your team? That's true, but but earlier in the season, I'm still smarting from that. Who goes for two with seconds left? Go to overtime and take your chances there. Don't end the game off of a stupidity call. Well, true, but also you're also at a point where, okay, we're so close to beating this team. Let me just go ahead and win it and be done. I'm okay but, with but, either. But decision. then you're it assuming. It just didn't work out. You're assuming no, you're going to be. No, you're just. No, you're not assuming. You're putting it all on the line. Here we go. We're going to go up by one. 
they can't, you know, they haven't been able to stop us. So, you know, it wasn't like there was a whole lot of time left. 2016, Jack Del Rio does that to the Saints. He's a hero. Right. 2022, Josh McDaniels does it to Kansas City. He's not because uh, he failed. Teams, teams play so, Kansas City different anyway. So that is true. That is true. I mean, I'll say this, and this is the only good thing I can say about Josh McDaniels' Raider squad this year. They didn't get blown out by Kansas City. Not yet. It wasn't 40 to 12 or anything like that. Not yet. Not, not yet. I'm I'm just talking about the, the game number one. Yeah, Saturday may be a different story. Saturday they may be like, oh, well, season's over. We're not going anywhere after today. I got to book my Hawaiian vacation, so I'm not going to play hard. I'm and hoping I can that's see the that. case. I can see that. And that, that's how you know a coach has lost a team. So we're going to see. And, and you know, just on the side of stats and things like that, my man Patrick Mahomes has never lost a road division game. That is also true. Um, so I guess it's safe to say with predictions, we're both going with Kansas City here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, you, you, I'll let you answer for me then. That, that'll that be my same answer. I can't bring myself to actually outright say it. But, um, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, Chargers are going to the Broncos. You think got that's your phone on you? You got uh, your phone on you? Somewhere around here, yeah. Let's do a quick search and tell me what that record for the Broncos is. Um. Where's that Broncos thing there? There it is. Pulling it up now. They're four and twelve. I'm gonna miss it by one game. <laughs> I told her I said they would win five. Wow. That pretty damn close. That's better than most people predicted. Uh, anybody watching this on the, uh, any given Sunday, uh, forum on Facebook, if you're a Bronco fan, you're worse off than us. So I'm happy. If we're a dumpster fire, y'all are the whole garbage pail. Just. They're still a dumpster fire. They're just a whole different type. They're an inferno. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Bronco fan. I had to laugh at y'all just to take some of the sting out of what I'm going through this year because it, it hurts. It hurts. But but you know what could happen? Sean Payton going to the Broncos as a head coach. However, what do you think if Harbaugh goes to the Broncos? Jim Harbaugh? Yeah. Michigan's coach? Yeah. I heard that too. I wouldn't be worried. I you, think you think, you think I mean, he can turn think, Russ around. Um, Russ is going to have to change some of his own stuff. Uh, he's going to have to do some in-house cleaning. You know, uh, self-reflection. He doesn't need all that extra crap to make himself better than the team. He needs to be. Part he of needs the team. to endear himself to the team, and stop saying. Self, you know, yeah. Um, I I do think that if Harbaugh became the head coach, he, he would be a thorn in the chief side yearly more than, um, just because I think he'd be more like a Vrabel, have the same type of mindset, you know, that good hard nosed mentality. Yeah, I just remember when Harbaugh was a quarterback. You know, just he wasn't anything to get excited about, but he's a winner. Yeah. Um. Yeah. By the I way, see, Chargers are going to win. Chargers are definitely going to win. I mean, the, who are we fooling? We're not even going to prolong although, that agony. Although they don't have anything to play for, so they could rest their guys. And but are they are win. they locked into that number yeah. five seed? We're locked into the playoffs. They're either going to okay. be five or six. Okay. Either way, they're on a road game. 
That's true. But who would you rather? Well, I was going to say, who would you rather play on the road? They may not, they may not even know who they're going to play at that point. Well, so. it, it would either be. Uh, it's one of the three. No, it's not. It, it, they're four or the they're five and six. So they would either uh, five would play seed four. So that's going to be the division. That's going to either be Jacksonville, Tennessee, whoever that whoever wins that game. Mm will win the division. So that's number four seed. They'll play number five. And then the six seed will play at this point, Buffalo. If the seedings don't change. Okay. That's true. Unless Baltimore beat Cincinnati, then they would play Cincinnati. Well, Cincinnati would have to come out of the second spot for that to happen. Cause two will play oh. seven. That's right. That's right. That's right. Cause Buffalo is still going to be ahead. Well, Buffalo, if they if they tie, they're still ahead of Cincinnati. So no, you're, you're right. right. So they would be three. So they would play Buffalo. They play the number. No, they would play the number three seed. So yeah, it'd be Cincinnati. Okay. Stop, stop confusing me. I'm sorry. That's what I do. <laughs> Two would play. Right now would be the Patriots. I think. If I think Patriots are number seven. Mm. I don't think they're in yet. Let me look right at that. I mean, they're not locked in, but if it started today, yeah, the Patriots would be number seven. Because that could still be the Steelers' spot. For the Steelers to do that, uh, Miami a whole lot's got to, to happen. Miami would have to lose, which is possibility. Patriots would have to lose. Which is definitely going to happen. And the Ravens would have to lose, I think. Which could happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, six one had those in the other. But, I mean, right now, it's Chiefs number one, Bills number two, Bengals three, Jaguars four, which, not to toot my own horn, but I did tell you Jaguars were going to be better than everybody thought they were this year. They certainly uh, were. Props to them. Chargers number five. Ravens number six, Patriots number seven. On the bubble for that last seven seed is the Dolphins, Steelers, and Titans. If the Titans beat the Jaguars, they'll be the number four seed because they'll win the division. Mm -hmm. And the Jaguars will be out. The Jaguars win, they win the division, and the Titans will be out. So that's a winner-take-all game right there. Yes. And that's also the, that's the game after the Chiefs-Raiders game on Saturday night. some good football coming up so yeah so it's i think that seven seeds is going to be between the patriots dolphins and steelers and i just don't want to see miami in the playoffs now real quick before we wrap it up that's funny right there because the beginning of the season miami was on fire and we thought oh miami's done turned around they got tyreek they're gonna be in the playoffs and now look at them they could just be out, completely out. Not, not a chance. Man, how things turn around. Yeah, it's weird how their record went. They won three, lost three, won five, and now have lost five. Mm-hmm. So they are they are eight and eight. So it's just it's really wicked how they, you mm-hmm. know, how their how their season played out. I will say this: congratulations to my squad. We didn't get officially eliminated until this past week. That's better than being eliminated in week five, Bronco fan. I'm sorry. I had to take one more shot at the Bronco fans. Um, Yep. To play as crappy as we have and not get eliminated until week 17, I'm okay with that. That doesn't mean I'm real good with it. Right now you have the number nine overall draft pick. I couldn't tell you who the best players are right now in the college football game right now. I I couldn't. Speaking <sighs> of college football, did you watch any of the 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 BCS playoff or whatever? Are, are you are you talking about USC and Tulane? No, they weren't in the playoff. But did you watch that game though? Uh huh. That vaunted USC team. Well, they lost by a point, right? Forty-one, yep, they... forty-two, or something like that. 45 to 46. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's how the uh that's how the Georgia Bulldogs beat Ohio State 41-42. That's karma, man. But TCU uh TCU beat Michigan, so it's TCU and Georgia for the national championship. I'm rooting for TCU. Me too. They looked really good. It was fun. Those two games were fun. But yeah, um I want to see some new blood next year in the BCS. I really do. I'm tired of the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Auburns. Um, Alabama and Auburn weren't in it. But they're always in the talk. They're always in, I, I I want new blood. I want to see a team like, where'd they come from? That's what you I want to see next year. You do. You have TCU. This that's, year. That's yeah. the keep that ball rolling. Underlying. Keep that ball yeah, rolling. Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta beat everybody. And those teams gotta gotta lose. But you know, those teams are too good. Yeah, that is true. I mean, you know, they what they should do is somehow make it a playoff system like the NFL has. You know, put in eight teams or whatever, and do it that way. But I think it'd be difficult with the college kids and things. But bro, what if Colorado got in the BCS next year? I know we got to quit calling the BCS because that's not it anymore. But that's. Uh, I think it's called the college football championship or some bull crap like that, but yeah, they're not going. It's to. still a bowl game though. So, you know, well, bowl, no, everybody, if you win six games, you're bowl eligible. Yeah. So, and not all of them are the big bowls. Right. But the big one is still a bowl. I forget what they well, call they're it. All, they're all bowls, but no, they're not. So like the game that you're talking about with the, uh, uh, Tulane and USC. That was the Sugar Bowl. That had mm. nothing to do with the college championship game. That is true. That is true. So, and the Sugar Bowl is a big bowl, but it's that had nothing to do with that. So, it, they changed the format a few years ago. But there's, in my opinion, college or Colorado might, depending on how they play, they might get a December 29th game like Kansas did, you know, against Arkansas yeah. or something like that. Um, but I don't uh, – it's going to be tough for Prime this year, I think. They're going yeah. to shock some people, but he's also going to be up dip against different competition. Yeah, I think it's going to be a wake-up call. But, he'll learn, though. Yeah, uh, he'll answer the bell. He definitely will. Yes, sir. All right. Do you got anything before we go out? Nope. Just want to reiterate, uh, if you are – religious believe in a higher power just say a prayer for that for that for the nfl player um Dem my, i know his last name's hamlin i think his first name is is it damar damar yeah i want to say i thought it, yeah because his brother's name is darius or something like that so yeah damar hamlin um just say a quick prayer for him and uh definitely yeah and that's all we got for today, y'all. But uh, be, make be, sure be, you... Be. That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah, like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Hit us with them comments and them thumbs ups. We really appreciate y'all. This has been the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm warped. He's warped. Big Show, take us on out. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. This is the first episode of 2023. Let's make it a good year. Love each other. Kiss your loved ones. See you next week. Later. Later.